You could have Googled germicidal UVC lighting and hoped for the best, but I'm glad you chose instead to come here and learn from bona fide germicidal UVC experts. Good morning and welcome to Seize the Power of Light, UVC disinfection for air, surfaces, and water. Uh, now looking around, we've got a good group here. I see installers, distributors, consultants, and engineers. Welcome to all of you. I'm Anthony Kapkin, editor of Electrical Business Magazine and your moderator. Over the next hour, you will hear legitimate information about wielding the power of UVC light to help make our world a safer place. One of the good things to come out of 2020, and there aren't many, is seeing germicidal UVC come into the spotlight. But these solutions are by no means something to be taken lightly. UVC solutions are serious business involving appropriate safety measures and custom solutions for the application at hand. It's not as simple as switching on a light, although I'm sure my friends here from Signify could help you with that too. Now, before I hand over the mic, let me tell you a little bit about today's presenter. Joining us from five hours in the future, straight from the Netherlands, is Signify's Jacques Gebours, Global Product Marketing for Lighting Purification. He started with Philips Lighting in 1979 and is among Signify's foremost experts in germicidal UVC solutions. Now, we also have several other Signify product experts on hand, should something go awry with Jacques' connection with us or just to help answer questions, including Nitin Tiagi, Dan McNeil, and Dejan Lenassi. Now, there are also several pamphlets and brochures under the Handouts tab, so please feel free to download download those and study them at your leisure. And with that, take it away, Jacques. So I'm Jacques Bourse, uh, speaking to you from uh, Belgium. And um, I will have the opportunity and the honor to tell you a little bit more about what you can do with UV uh, to keep your environment clean. Let me first tell you something about the company I'm working for. So it's Signify, and Signify is coming from Philips Lighting, who, that is a 125 years old lighting company that is has been leading the lighting market for that many years. And in 2018, we have become Signify, but we continue to do the same thing we did before, and even we try to do even better by providing you innovative energy efficient lighting products, systems and services, and also solutions for UVC disinfection. As you can see below in the screen, we represent quite a lot of brands today from offering solutions to almost every application that you can think of. But today we are gonna talk about UV. And there are three subjects we are gonna to touch. First of all, why UVC disinfection is important. Then we'll have a closer look to the different applications for UVC disinfection. And finally, we're gonna talk about why work with Signify to have your UVC solution that you need for your application. But before we start, we're gonna ask you to answer a very short poll question. So maybe Anthony, you can take over here. Perfect, so I've just launched the poll and that is, have you heard of UVC solutions? And then please select one of the following. Just take a few seconds. We'll keep it up there just for a few seconds longer. And so in terms of the results, yes, I'm looking to implement solutions, 33%. Uh, kind of have heard about uh, germicidal UVC, 37%, and 30% have not heard much about it at all. So I think we have a nice distribution. Let me start with why we need to think about disinfection. And I think it's quite evident that we are exposed in our daily lives to a lot of places where you can come in touch with microbes or viruses or other kind of organisms. So just think about the door handle, a chair, or any object you're 
in contact with during the day. And not to forget also, when you're in a space, you're also, of course, be confronted with contaminated air. So the infection can come both from surfaces and from the air that you breathe. But also important to understand is that a lot of these organisms are not harmful to us, but also a lot of them are potentially harmful and can make you sick. A lot of these organisms can stay alive for longer periods of time. So as an example, the flu can survive on surfaces, depending of course on the surface, more than two or three days. So it is important to pay attention that these surfaces need to be cleaned. And of course, in our today environment, it's quite obvious that we are, of course, also thinking about SARS-CoV-2, which is causing a disease that we all well, very well known today, COVID-19. As we know, it's still not over yet. Um, it's still a major issue in our society. And still a lot of people get sick and even some people die from it. So it's definitely changing our lives and it's still impacting our lives also in the, in the future. It's important to understand that this has increased the need for disinfection, especially in the coming months and probably even in the coming years. So here we see how such a virus can be transmitted. There is, of course, the direct transmission between people by small droplets that are exhaled or that come into the air by sneezing or coughing or by speaking loud and are transported in the direct vicinity to people that are close to you. And if you then inhale these viruses, there is a chance that you are going to get sick. Other issue is that these small water droplets with viruses inside will fall down on objects which are close to you. And that means another person who's, who's touching the same surface is picking up the viruses with his hands and can transport this into his eyes or into his mouth and get sick that way. Another possibility, of course, is that if you have contaminated hands that you touch objects like a, the door handle or any other object that you are touching in your neighborhood. And also that's a transmission way that can transport the virus from one person to the next person. Knowing all this, we need to think about how we can stop this transmission. One way of doing this, improve this disinfection by using UVC. For those people who have said that they don't know yet much about UVC, UVC is an invisible radiation to the human eye. It's a part of the UV radiation, which is divided into three categories. The one with the shortest wavelength and the most energetic radiation is the what we call UVC, which is all wavelengths which are lower than 280 nanometers. Then there is a second category, UVB, which is between 280 and 315. And the third category, which is UVA, which is between 315 and 400 nanometers. And with longer wavelengths than 400 nanometers, you become in the visible light region. UVC is the most powerful radiation and has one very specific property. The wavelengths in the region around 254 nanometer are very effective in disinfecting, meaning that they are able with that radiation to inactivate bacteria, viruses, molds, all kinds of organisms that have DNA or RNA, which is damaged by the UVC radiation. Not every wavelength, of course, is as effective, but let's, the wavelength we are mentioning here, the 254, is a wavelength which is typically produced by UVC lamps, UVC lamps which are based on a mercury discharge. And this radiation is very effective, more than 80% effective in damaging this DNA. So on the next slide, 
a little bit more in detail, you can see what is happening. On the left side, you see a virus which is having some material called RNA, which is the material which allows the virus to reproduce. And what the ultraviolet light, the UVC light is doing, it's breaking the band of the RNA or the DNA. Because this one band is cut, it is not able anymore to multiply itself. So it cannot reproduce, and if it cannot reproduce, it cannot make you sick. So the whole principle of UVC radiation and UVC disinfection is that it will damage the DNA, it will stop the organisms from reproducing, and this is valid not only for viruses, but also for bacteria, mold, and spores, so for so it is very well known that it can inactivate these organisms. The difference between the organisms is only that some of them are a little bit more resistant than other ones. The good thing is that we have found that the SARS-CoV-2 that is causing COVID is very sensible to UVC. We have worked together with the Boston University to investigate how, uh, how much energy is needed to inactivate the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We have found that uh, with a very low dose, and dose is a measure which consists of intensity on the surface and the time that it is exposed, which gives you an idea about the amount of energy that you need to de deactivate the um, organism. This virus is rather easy to um, take care of. So this was a little bit the basis of UVC, but let's now go to why UVC is next to the fact that it does uh, disin disinfect and that it does deactivate organisms, why it is also a very interesting solution. First of all, UVC disinfection has been used for more than 40 years in all kinds of applications to disinfect. It's very well known to be used to, for cleaning drinking water, for cleaning wastewater, uh, also used for a long time in uh, surface disinfection, objects in the food industry or in uh, laboratories. So there's a lot of places where UVC has been used for a very, very long time to disinfect. The second important feature of um, UVC is that it, it is effective against virtually all organisms. The only difference is that some organisms need more energy, some organisms need less energy. All the bacteria and viruses that have been tested to date are one way or another inactivated by UVC radiation. Another very interesting property is that it is fast. It can disinfect surfaces and objects in a couple of minutes in water disinfection in a couple of se seconds. So it all depends on the amount of energy that you apply, but it is a very fast technology. And last but not least, it's also a, a technology which is very flexible. It can it exists in all kinds of applications. The lamps that produce the UVC radiations are available in a lot of different sizes and powers, so it can be adapted to virtually any application. This brings us to the next subject, which is the applications of UVC disinfection. We want to start again now with a second poll question. Very good. I've just launched the second poll. So what kind of locations do you need to find a solution for? And uh, we have four options there to choose from. There's office, school, retail and gym, manufacturing, industrial facilities, government, city infrastructure. So we'll just let that run for a few more seconds. And if you could just choose one of those four where you would really like to find a solution. So where do we really need to find these solutions? Overwhelmingly, offices and schools at 59%. Uh, next, at 30% would be manufacturing, industrial, and those kinds of facilities. And then a little lower down, we've got government city infrastructure at 4%, and the retail environment and gyms at 7%.
it's clear that uh, we are thinking about disinfection, especially when we think about our work environment and when we think about our kids in school, of course. If you look to these environments, then just looking at the pictures, you can see those places where you have contact with surfaces, places where you have contact with all kinds of objects. Think about your phone, think about your laptop, but also when you're going to work in public transport, when you go to an airport, when you visit a restaurant. So all these kinds of places, there are situations where the air can be polluted, especially when a lot of people are gathered in a meeting room, in a bus, on a train, um, in a classroom, in a meeting room. So all these places should be taken care of to make them as less infective as possible. So when we then go to the options that you have with UVC, then one of the very interesting options is to disinfect the air. And the application we are talking about in this case is what we call upper air disinfection. And this stands for a solution that will disinfect the air in the upper region of the room. It will emit UVC in the part of the room which is not accessed by people. So it's basically above your head. And by doing that, it is disinfecting that air. And that air is being exchanged by convection or by ventilation or by air movements with the air which is in the lower room. This solution has a major advantage is that it is taking care of any contamination in the room basically at the source. So if somebody is in the room that is coughing, sneezing or releasing viruses in the air, the air will move into the upper part of the room and will be disinfected over there. So this is a very efficient solution to decrease in a very fast way to reduce the organism load in the room with 90% or more. It is radiation in the upper part of the room. That means there is no people present, but you also have to make sure that there is no UV in the lower room to make sure that people in the lower room can be safe and are not irradiated with the UVC. To be able to do that, you need to design your equipment and you need to do the installation in such a way that there is no radiation coming into the lower room, which is checked by measuring and also first calculating and measuring the intensity at eye level and to make sure that the radiation is on a level which is safe for people to be in that space. The big advantage of this solution is that it can work continuously when the people are in the room, taking care immediately of any contamination in the room. So this is a very good solution for those places where a lot of people are together, where there is a higher risk of contamination, and also in those places where there's a lot of circulation, people that are passing that could potentially leave some uh, contaminated air behind. So just think about this, all these day-to-day situations. Think about restroom where people go in and out. Think about the coffee corner. Think about meeting rooms. Think about classrooms, of course. So all these kinds of places can be taken care of with upper air UV to make sure that the air in the room is as clean as possible. Then another very interesting application is the surface disinfection. This means that you install equipment at the ceiling, which is irradiating UV in the space to disinfect all the surfaces that are directly irradiated by the UV. This will disinfect any object in the space. So if you see on the left picture, all the uh, Equipment in the, in the space, everything that is directly irradiated with the UVC is disinfected. So, of course, when, when we design such a solution, we make sure that the, the irradiation values are sufficient to do that disinfection within the time frame that we are expected to do. In a lot of cases, this is used overnight when the spaces are empty. You can clean the complete office and you can leave them on the whole night and switch them off in the morning. So everywhere where the surface has been touched or contaminated, you will be able to clean the surface. Uh, as an additional solution to the normal cleaning that you would be doing, 
this radiation is going to take care of every yes, small little space where the UVC light can reach. And then another solution for objects that you're carrying around or that multiple people are using. So we have disinfection chambers, as we call this, which allow you to disinfect your personal belongings, but also products that are delivered. You put them into the chamber. You set the time that is required. Within five minutes or 10 minutes, these objects are completely cleaned with the UVC light, which is coming from all sides. And these solutions exist in different sizes. So depending on the load that has to go through. What's also important to understand is that if we design such solutions in software, which is similar to lighting software, where we can calculate all the intensities in the space so that we can find the exact spot where to put all these luminaires to be the most effective with the least use of energy doing the disinfection. And as I told you before, what is important is the irradiance. So the amount of energy per square meter multiplied by the time of exposure, which will give you the UV dose. And this UV dose is the amount of energy needed to have a disinfection rate, depending on the level you want to clean. So you can clean up to 90% or 99% or 99.9%. If you just increase the time, your disinfection rate will just go up. After the planning and designs, of course, we, we need to get it installed. And once it's installed, we also will, together with our partners, we will uh, check if everything is working correctly, if everything is also safe as it has been designed. So if it's, for instance, for, let's say, upper air, then we will check if all the irradiation levels in the lower room are in line with what we expected. So all these steps will be taken if you need a solution for your specific spot in your office, in your school, in your, let's say, bus or train or anything. What's important when you look for a UVC solution? So first of all, it's important that you work with a partner that has the expertise that is working with UVC already for 35 years, as Signify is, that is taking care that the solutions that they offer have been properly tested and do what they promise that they will do, that are safe, meaning that they are not only electrically safe, but also safe for the application of the UVC radiation, that nobody is being hurt by the use of the UVC. So these products are being certified and that are checked that they are compliant with all the regulations that are required for this application. Then also Signify will provide you with design in services and of course also make sure that the proper training and installation material is available and also maintenance instructions. So with Signify, you are well served and please tell us where you want to use UVC and we will make sure that we offer you a solution that will do the job and will help you to protect people, children, and everybody in yeah, this new situation where we are in to make sure that uh, we all stay safe. I think that's the most important thing today. So now we have time for questions and answers. Yes, we do indeed, Jacques. Thank you for such an excellent overview of, uh, well, what the virus does and, and how we go about deactivating that uh, virus uh, with uh, these Signify solutions. Is there a risk? Uh, in using those uh, upper air disinfection solutions uh, because maybe possibly that UVC beam could reflect off the ceiling or other surfaces near the ceiling down into the lower room. Is there a risk there? Uh, yes, of course. Um, there, there is, it is possible that your ceiling is too much reflecting. So that is one of the things that is taken into account when a solution is designed for the space. If the ceiling reflectance is really too high then, and the ceiling height is very low, then it is very well possible that the installation, let's say the upper air installation, needs to be limited. That means the amount of energy that can be installed is not optimal for, let's say, the fastest air disinfection. But it is part, really part of the design that's being done. So it, 
taken into account when the simulations are being done. And we have, of course, a lot of knowledge already on what are the, the typical sealing materials that are being used and what is the typical reflection in the UVC region. Because don't forget, it's not, on, not the same reflection for light as for UVC. The reflection in the UVC region is different than the reflection in the lighting region. Things that are reflecting, highly reflecting in visible light are not always highly reflecting in UVC. Thinking about just white color is very well reflecting. Very often, white paint is not reflecting at all in UVC. So this is the kind of knowledge that yeah, is important when you design such a solution. But be assured that these products, when they are properly designed for the space, they will not have any harm done to people that are in the space. So Jacques, all the all the more reason then to make sure that you uh, uh, tag team with uh, someone who knows how to do these studies and perform all the measurements, rather than just buying something off the shelf and hoping it'll work. Very clear. Yes, indeed. Uh, very good. Uh, now, I uh, did receive another question. Actually, thanks to all of you, a whole bunch of questions are flooding in. Uh, can you speak, Jacques, uh, something to the effect of, uh, regarding the safeties uh, that, that are built into these units? Uh, now, this question was asking about radiation levels, but uh, if you want to tackle that maybe more generally in terms of the different safety, uh, built-in safety protocols for these various units to, to keep people safe. But there is a very clear uh, guidance in international regulations which tells you what is the amount of energy that is allowed uh, in the space where people are present. It clearly describes how, much, how high the energy can be in that lower space. If people are in that space for, let's say, eight hours, then there is a, a level which is on the microwatts level that is allowed in that space. And this is measured in the space at eye level, which is typically about six feet high or one meter, one meter 70 from the floor to make sure that even at that level, we are not harming any, any people with um, radiation of UV. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, I have a question here uh, dealing with the maintenance of these units. Uh, an, an important question because you want to make sure uh, these things are running. So, so Jacques, tell me, how, how do you know when these lamps, light sources uh, burn out, otherwise fail? Uh, how can maintenance staff monitor the system? Lamps have a lifetime. UVC lamps are um, at a specified lifetime, they still have a level of UVC power, which is for signify lamps uh, always more than 85%. So at the lifetime we specify our lamps still have an output of 85% or more. Basically, if you know the hours that the lamps are operating, then you know when to change them because this is basically clearly specified. Typically, these lamps have a, a specified useful lifetime of more than 9,000 hours, which is, means that they can be used continuously during a complete year, and then they should be exchanged to have an always an effective solution for disinfection. If, of course, they are only used during office hours when people are present, then, of course, their lifespan is going to be, instead of one year, it's going to be three times more. So it's going to be around three years. So everything depends on how they're used and where they're used. Just to drill uh, in that one just a little bit more, if, if, if I'm a maintenance tech and I'm, I'm walking through the facility, is there any way for me to know just by looking at the, the, the fixture, the device, uh, to know whether it'll come on or not? Uh, yes, in a very simple way, if it doesn't light anymore, then of course it doesn't work anymore. Okay, very uh, good, very good. <laughs> so it's, it's, like, it's like a normal light source, but when I was talking about these 9,000 hours, then most of these lamps, let's say 90, more than 95% of these lamps are still working. So you, they're still lighting up, still giving some, some little bit of blue visible light, but that doesn't mean that they are still effective. Basically, the advice is to change the lamp on the specified useful lifetime because then you are sure that your UVC output is still on the level where you need it to be effective in disinfection. It is important that, that you have the right level of disinfection that the system is designed for. So that means you should change the lamps when they have reached their 
useful lifetime. When it comes to installing these solutions, are there are there certified installer programs or designer programs for the solution, uh, or uh, can your uh, electrical contractor install these solutions? Uh, who who can do this work? Yeah, clearly, I think there are two ways to do it, uh, to go about it. We ourselves have a dedicated system center approach, where we do have our in-house teams who can design and execute on a project. So, so, so clearly, that's the that's the preferred and the recommended route. Uh, we are also uh, certifying uh, our, our value-added partners and and partners who can uh, execute on their behalf. So, if if in case uh, we are not able to execute for some reason, or the customer wants to go through uh, a value-added partner, that's also something which is possible. Okay, so if I can just pop in here, uh, because uh, thanks again, everyone who are uh, pouring in with your questions. Uh, so one question has come in as an electrical contractor. I have many clients who would be interested in a UVC germicidal solution. Uh, so now speaking to an electrical contractor, how would he go about uh, getting this product or getting perhaps you on board to, to help him deliver a solution to a client? And I'll, I'll, I'll simply say that at that point in time, please reach out to the uh, to the Signify representative, and we'll work through our system center uh, to ensure that your solution is designed through the in-house team, and work through the best route on execution. It, it, the, the, the route to execution could be doing through our in-house uh, team, or could be training you and and and, and uh, uh, to 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 get certified to to be able to do that installation. But that's something that will depend on on really the application and the type of solution that you are uh, going to uh, require for that particular uh, solution. Very good, thank you, Nitin, and thank you, Sam, for that question. Uh, now, uh, I have another question here because uh, I don't want to uh, uh, forget to ask this one, and it kind of goes back to earlier on in the presentation when we were talking about uh, the virus and and just killing germs in general and stuff. Uh, now, is that achieving a 100% or 99.99% uh, effective killing of all bad germs, or are we just looking at a reduction in in the overall percentage? Basically. If you are talking about air disinfection, because air is moving, it will depend on number one, if the air is being contaminated constantly, meaning if a person is in the room that is infectious and is breathing or speaking loudly or coughing, then you will be adding organisms, viruses to the air constantly. So what UVC will do, for instance, upper air UVC will do, it will take care of the organisms that come in this upper layer. But because you're adding viruses, you will end up with a kind of equilibrium, meaning you're removing and at the same time you're adding. Typically, when you talk about the air disinfection, you're talking about, let's say, 90% reduction, this kind of levels but never 99.99% in the air. So you're not, you cannot take care of everything because it, it is basically being supplied constantly. If there has been a person in the room and he goes out of the room, then you can reach, for instance, 99% reduction if the system is well designed within 20 minutes. That means your concentration was 100 and after 20 minutes is 1% left. And of course, if you wait 10 minutes longer, it's again going to be 90% less. So then indeed you can reach 99.9% reduction in that space. So imagine a meeting room, there have been 10 people in there, they leave the room, somebody was sick and has been polluting the air. Within 10 minutes, you will have maybe 90% reduction. Within 20 minutes, you have 99% reduction. When you talk about surface, then it mainly depends on the time that you have available. For instance, an overnight irradiation, then you will indeed be able to have a reduction to 99, 99.9%. If your surface is polluted, let's say dirty, then it is possible that the viruses are in the dirt. And then, of course, the UVC cannot reach it. So that means very often UVC is, an, is complementary to the normal cleaning procedures. If, if you're cleaning surfaces and you forget a spot or it's not really perfectly cleaned, then the UVC will give the extra layer of safety. 
if you have enough time, then of course, then you will be able to have a very high degree of disinfection. Uh, very good. I'm glad you mentioned that. That uh, you know, you, you, the the space should be somewhat clean <laughs> for for these systems to work very well. Uh, now, I've received a, a couple of questions. I'm, I'm going to try to combine them, uh, but uh, a number of attendees are are asking about the uh, the smartness of these solutions. Uh, so their ability to be uh, connected, uh, perhaps with a building automation system, uh, perhaps their own inherent smarts to uh, notify users of I'm on, I'm off, I'm broken, I'm not broken. Uh, can you speak a little bit to their smartness and connectedness? That's the one I'm going to leave to Nitin also. Yeah, thanks, Jack. And I think uh, that's a great question. And uh, I think this also links back to the earlier question about maintenance and and how can we actually even trigger preventive maintenance, not just wait for the lamps to fail. So, so clearly, I think Jacques did touch upon the control systems that we provide along with these these solutions that can be built into the the the, the solution design that we will provide for an application. So once we design those controls in, uh, we will be able to link them back into a BMS system, or we can uh, we also have our own connectivity platform called Interact. Uh, we we should be able to link these uh, these controls to the Interact platform which should allow you to remotely monitor the health of the system and also remotely control the system uh, as and when needed. So, so clearly, again, uh, it depends on the solution and the request from the customer to the degree of control required. But certainly, we do have the required uh, uh, design capabilities and the products that will allow you to do that. Uh, thank you for that, Nitin. Thanks for weighing in. Uh, now, I have a couple questions here uh, about the uh, standards uh, used uh, to uh, to certify these products uh, to, to be approved for use in Canada. Can you speak a little bit to uh, the sort of certifications or standards uh, to which these uh, these products, these product lines uh, apply? Uh, yes, so I, I would like to add that uh, the certification and testing community is working very actively to develop the standard requirements and the testing requirements for those products. Those products, as you know, exist for a long time, but didn't come to the surface as uh, recently due to the COVID situation. Uh, nonetheless, uh, there, there are a number of uh, standards, international standards, that are already in a place um, and many of those are also adopted in Canada. It is the first time or very rare, and this is fortunately the case with the GUV or UVC lights, that within the certification process, the certification process typically for the lighting products takes in consideration electrical and mechanical safety, which is a shock hazard for instance. However, with the UVC products, um, in order to get a certification for Canada, you need to comply with the photobiological safety, uh, which Jack spoke about. So the product, if it is not uh, in a risk category and under the application that will not fulfill that requirements, and this is, by the way, international requirements that is adopted in Canada, IEC 62471. Uh, that product cannot be granted certification. So uh, to make a long story short, those products, once certified, they're safe, completely safe, not only uh, from electrical point of view, but from the photobiological point of view. They also take in consideration ozone generation which um, uh, Philips Lighting provides a solution with uh, approved and certified lamps that are not emitting ozone. And as you know, ozone, if you're choosing um, the product that you don't have a knowledge of and uh, that has a UV lights, can also produce the ozone. So with the certification process, uh, all our products are safe um, in any way possible and um, uh, has a certification that proves uh, that compliance. Uh, very good. Thank you, Dejan. Uh, see, I wanted to throw that question in there uh, to uh, to make sure that you were paying attention and you were ready to give us some answers. Uh, 
And I am glad uh, that you mentioned uh, the ozone uh, because there was a question about uh, ozone production, but I think you've uh, handled that uh, quite nicely with that response. Uh, now there's uh, one question here, uh, perhaps shock you could spend just a, a little bit more time uh, talking about the differences uh, between the UVA, UVB and UVC and, and how effective each is in, in germicidal applications. Let's be very clear, UVC is definitely the most effective solution for inactivating microorganisms. If you deviate a lot, let's say uh, 254, 260 nanometer region, then the effectivity goes down rapidly. If you enter from the UVC into the UVB region, which is next to it, then you will have in the UVB region, an effectivity of maybe one or two percent left compared to the UVC region, to the 254 nanometer. If you go further to, into further, even longer wavelengths, UVA, it's basically not having any effect on a DNA or RNA, so it's not effective in inactivating organisms. So UVA is, is not suitable for that. Maybe you have heard about UVA solutions, but then very often they are in combination with some catalysts uh, which are activated by the UVA. And these catalysts, they can produce kind of oxidizing agents which can destroy microbes or can destroy viruses when they come near to the surface that has this catalyst on it. Definitely it's not the radiation itself that's doing the job, then it's another mechanism. So it's not really the same mechanism that can work. And it's um, much more difficult to get this applied in, let's say, the applications we were talking about, like air disinfection or, or surface disinfection, because yeah, you need to bring the organism close to the surface that has the catalyst. Excellent. Thank you for that. So bottom line, it is uh, UVC that we are uh, aiming to get for maximum effectiveness and it does pay to make sure that you partner up with someone who uh, understands these solutions. Uh, we're just about out of time here, so I apologize we weren't able to get to everyone's questions, uh, but do reach out to your Signify rep. If you don't know who that is, then uh, you got the email there on the screen, signifycanada at signify.com, and uh, you know just let them know that uh, you have some questions and they will be happy to tackle them. Uh, Jacques, thank you for your time today. And uh, earlier I said you were coming to us from the Netherlands, but it's actually Belgium, but it is still after hours for you. So I hope you get overtime pay for joining us. Uh, and thank you also to our other experts in the background who, who jumped in to help us with questions. Uh, before I let everyone go, just a reminder, there are those uh, pamphlets and brochures under the handouts tab. So please download them and give them a read when you have a chance. Uh, thanks to all of you again for attending for and for your desire to learn more about germicidal UVC lighting from Bonafide experts. And thank you, Signify, for putting this together. Uh, please visit ebmag.com slash webinars for recordings of all our past education sessions, including this one, which will be uploaded shortly. And with that, thanks again, everyone. I wish all of you an excellent day.